very welcome to the Herland Report. Uh, Mrs. Linda Ulstein, you are a human rights activist uh, for Libya and uh, you are also a spokesperson for the prisoners in Libya at the moment. And we know that Libya disintegrated into complete chaos and is a failed state today, ruled by different uh, militia warlords who uh, have the control also over the state institutions partly in, in Libya. And there's just a total chaos um, in that country with immense suffering uh, for the people. And we know that, according to sources on the ground, approximately 35,000 are incarcerated and imprisoned without getting any trial, many of them being in prisons since 2011, where they were incarcerated due to them being loyalists to the Gaddafi. Uh, and they say as people as old as, as women, 80 years old, stay in these prisons. And this is happening under Western watch, uh, and yet, even though it is under Western watch and partly under Western dominion, nobody does anything. Uh, and that's so strange to us because the West uh, used to be the place where we fought for human rights uh, for all, uh, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. But we're here to speak about Libya before the war and you used to live in Libya at that time, isn't it so? Yes, uh, I want to thank you for uh, the invitation and uh, to thank you for uh, to bring the voice of those prisoners. Uh, as we see, since uh, this war start, uh, this war who is based on lies, and we never uh, reach the truth and hear the truth of really what's going on in Libya. And uh, not for to give you a compliment, but uh, the Herland report was uh, between the first people who take the, ca the Libyan case seriously. And that's why I want to thank you for that, with, an, with my name and the name of the Libyan people and their prisoners. Uh, since, you know, this war start, uh, since uh, the West attacked Libya uh, by using the NATO with excuse of democracy, we see how Libya became. Personally, I'm from Algeria but I was living in Libya. And you just came from Algeria yes. uh, to join us in this shoot. Exactly. We're so honored. Yes, as I told you, I am originally from Algeria, but uh, I raised the voice of those uh, people as an activist uh, for human rights. Uh, I see what's going on in Libya, and this is uh, very inhuman. And uh, this injustice, uh, like you say, the West, we learn from the books, you know, for about the equality and freedom and uh, equality and so on. But in reality, we see totally the opposite. Uh, since uh, the NATO attack Libya in 2011, the situation is really horrible. Uh, I have really no word to explain what's going on in Libya. Uh, so much injustice, it's a horrible things happen. We see in the time of Gaddafi, in 1986 exactly, I was living in Libya. And I even was working for the Italian embassy for a little while. And uh, the Libyan people was living in peace. Uh, they, they have all what they need. Uh, Libya was the second richest country uh, in Africa. They have the, be the best standard of life compared to the African country, but uh, as we know, all of us, the really truth, the, the, the regime of Gaddafi was not welcome to, to the West uh, countries because uh, he's demanding uh, the freedom for Africa. That, uh, uh, you remember uh, Gaddafi was helping a lot uh, Mansell Mandela for the freedom against the apartheid and so on. And this policy is not acceptable for the West. Africa have to stay for the rest of the life, the third world and uh, our oil, the gold, the diamonds, all the goods of Africa have to be for somebody else and not for the African. And that's why Gaddafi, he fights so hard. The leader, Muammar Gaddafi, he fights so hard for the freedom of Africa. And we all know with even, he was, this club, uh, he, he was eliminated and killed because of the program of helping Africa to raise up. 
and with paper from CIA and FBI and all those stuff. And uh, we heard about it, but now everybody's very sure about really the main reason of bomba bombarding Libya and killing Muammar Gaddafi. It was for the program of the back currency of the gold backed currency of the CFR currency and this is not acceptable it will be concurrence for the dollar and the euro then the war it's a dirty war it's not about a dictator it's not about democracy it's about egoism and selfish and the own interests uh, Hillary Clinton's emails were declassified this came up in the emails that um, the list of needs for Libya, this is WikiLeaks and also Judicial Watch, has been very active in bringing these emails up. And uh, in one of those emails, it was written clear clearly, and this is Hillary Clinton really being very careful about the reasons for going into Libya. And the civilians and the need to protect civilians was not mentioned one single time in the email. All other reasons, economic reasons, geopolitical reasons were mentioned in the email. Not one sentence about the need to protect civilians. So it's problematic that we see the Western media and, and the Libya war probably was the worst example so far then one could add maybe the Syria war uh, coming later but at that time the Libya war was the first war where we saw that the whole Western media was jointly only speaking one side of the picture uh, saying uh, you know the NATO had to go in to defend the civilians which we now know was not in any way the truth at all because in previous wars such as the war in Iraq and Afghanistan and also uh, Serbia and the Kosovo question you always had a large segment of the Western media that was highly critical and especially the left-wing media in the West was highly critical of those wars but in the Libya war something has happened and everyone agreed in the West that uh, this was a good war to wage. And we've seen in the aftermath by, for example, the 2016 uh, House of Commons report from the UK stating that all the things or most of the things that we heard in the Western media at that time that Gaddafi was killing his own people, that he was aiming at the civilians and bombing them with airplanes in Benghazi, all of that simply was not true. But how was it to live in Libya when you so did or in the 80s? Libya, uh, when I was living uh in Libya, I was having a very normal life and uh, I was coming from Switzerland at that time and I was wearing my jeans and living like I was living in Geneva. Then, uh, okay, it's true, Libya was a little bit conservative compared to other countries, conservative, but in the good sense. Even I was living in the West and I'm a very open-minded girl just because in Libya, example, they are against alcohol, not because of the, for the freedom of people, but Gaddafi, he was a little bit worried for his own people. Maybe he was more than a father, than a, than, than a, a president uh, ruling the country. And this is one of the things who led me to, to really to smile, because when they say he's a dictator, a dictator when uh, your dictator try to protect you about alcohol or with uh, you are not you don't found any places for the hazard to play with money uh, you, you 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 don't have uh, any houses for uh, you know the the, the the you know they they pay the government uh, give a salary each month for each family and for each child then the libyan people was having all what they need and you know the base element it was very very cheap uh, the Qaddafi the, the, the government buy them with the full prices but uh, when, when the people get them very very cheap like sugar oil tea or those the base things it was almost uh, for nothing it was like a gratis and each uh, citizen have the right to own his own house and 
you know, and the student, they was have, having the highest, you know, uh, salary to go to, st to study outside the country. Uh, all, almost of the people who they go in holiday in the summertime, it was the Libyan people, not even the Algerian or the Tunisian or the Moroccan. Nobody was traveling the summer, you know, the summertime, all the Libyan are outside Libya. Then, and all the family own cars and all what they need. They was, it was the best standard of life in Africa. It was in Libya. We don't say it's the paradise, but Gaddafi was having a plan to save money and to make a strong Africa, to, to raise the whole continent. And this is, it was his dream, and that dream was not allowed. And, uh, you know, you can, fo you can fool people once, but you cannot fool them for the rest of their life. You cannot say the West was there for our freedom or for the free of Africa or the freedom of the Libyan people. Since 2011, after the NATO was bombarding Libya, nobody cared about the Libyan people. All what they care about, it was to finish this Gaddafi who was trying to help and to raise Africa. The program is to stop the, val the valuta, the CFR currency, and the program of, you know, of the gold-baked currency and uh, to, to have independent Africa. The, 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 they was against that program. That's the main things of the war, to take the Libyan oil, to have control uh, 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 over the money of the Libyan people. And uh, you see the scandal of uh, the money who was uh, stolen uh, in Belgium, uh, uh, $10 billion uh, uh, dollar for the Libyan people, and uh, you know, all the, all the things uh, the Libyan people own outside Libya. Nobody paid anything back. The Libyan people, they have, they have, you know, uh, they have money in Dubai, they have in uh, France, they have in America, they have in Turkey. Nobody was giving anything to the Libyan people back. Nobody was taking, nobody care about the Libyan people. All what they care, it's to take the oil, to take their own interests, all their needs and who care about the Libyan people. And you can see this even the tragedy I ever never see in 1986, one Libyan standing in the front of the bank. Today in 2018, the richest country, the second richest country in the world is living a drama. People have to stand from two and three and four o'clock in the morning in the front of the banks and they don't get the money. There is no even currency, there is no money in the banks. Where's the money of the Libyan people? This is the question. It's a good question and, and when we look back at 2011 uh, uh, and the numbers there, we see already early, okay, you have the February 17 revolution, uh, already I think it was the 23rd of February, there were meetings in the White House with Obama, uh, administration speaking about the need to 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 have sanctions against Libya, uh, sanctions meaning basically confiscating um, the the assets, the Libyan assets that were in the international banks. That's well, well, pretty much really what a sanction means in meant in that case. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple three days later, they had already uh, confiscated around 30 billion uh, U.S. dollars in different. Um, banks, assets, you know, the Libyan investment fund had uh, invested in, uh, and, and let me just add, this is the paradox, because when we read the newspapers at the time, uh, the Western newspapers spoke of the Libyan investment fund, which is uh, like the Libyan oil fund, uh, as though it was Gaddafi's personal um, wealth. Uh, you know, and they said he had invested this and this amount in Coca-Cola or Philips or whichever company, and, and now we have, you know, uh, have placed sanctions against this and we have retracted his money, and they spoke as though it was his money. It was the Libyan Investment Fund. Each nation, even Norway, has its own investment fund, and it's one of the largest in the world. That doesn't mean that the Prime Minister, it's, it's the Prime Minister's personal 
personal funds. Everybody knows it's the state funds. Uh, so within a few days, 30 million were confiscated. And then um, we know that around 150 billion, uh, you know, were, were confiscated from the Libyan investment fund uh, and the Libyan state funds. And the paradox is a few years later, because the Americans were the one in control of that, of course. They're just a few years back now. They said that we will release the money now back to the Libyan Investment Fund. It will run out of Malta and it will be Libyans now handling this. And we are releasing 67 billion. So one wonders what happened with the discrepancy between the 150 and the 67 being released. Uh, you know, I can tell you, it's uh, the worst war I never see. And it's a scandal and it's a shame what's going on really in Libya because we all know all these wars, all this war was based on lies, only to take over. We all know about, you know, the problems of the, uh, the international economy problems if, who start since 2009, 2010, and it's getting worse. Then the next target after Iraq, it was Libya. That's it. That's the really truth. And everybody know this. Everybody know this. Then they don't need to play like uh, it's, this war was based for democracy. It was not for democracy. It was for the best of the West. And the biggest hands in this war is uh, Sarkozy, who was a big part of this game because, you know, uh, Muammar Gaddafi was uh, having a problem uh, to be in the uh, to Libya to be in the blacklist for Le Corby and different uh, subject, different stuff. And uh, Sarkozy he used this uh, as excuse <coughs> for because Libya was planning to 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 go to uh, uh, to uh, you know uh, the new Libya because everybody have this excuse about. Uh, uh, Muammar Gaddafi is a dictator and it's an old regime and this is don't go with the, with the new generation and so on and so on. Then uh, Saif al-Islam al-Qaddafi start with the, 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 uh, the new Libya, you know, and uh, he want to change everything. Uh, but they don't want to give the chance. And this is not only talking with, uh, with the, uh, the, the, the king of... Uh, of Dubai, he himself, uh, Sheikh Mohammed, uh, he said himself, yes, Gaddafi was taking contact with me and they are pl play, p planning to change the system. And he asked him about, you know, uh, uh, to, to, to make uh, Libya as, du as Dubai, you know, one of the biggest uh, country in North Africa for attraction and uh, everything. And when the West, they heard this, this money should not be invest for the Libyan people. This money w should be stolen from the Libyan people and from the regime of Gaddafi, and especially this uh, plan of to get Africa united and strong with all the oil and diamonds and all the goods of Africa. Then uh, Sarkozy, he take advantage of this and he borrow money from the Libyan state for his uh, campaign, of course, and he promised after he's getting president of this campaign, he will stand by the Libya side, you know, because as a access to the West country. Even Gaddafi was trying to make Libya better and open, but he was not accepted. It's interesting when you look at the figures uh, for how uh, uh, life was in Libya, at that time, I am born and raised in Africa as well. And uh, due to that, uh, I have some knowledge about uh, Africa and how Africa works. And I remember even how everybody in Africa looked up to Libya and how the Libya at that time was helping many of the other African countries. And after Gaddafi uh, was removed and removed and ousted, so many of the African leaders, I could mention so many African presidents who came together in the African Union and stated their anger at what had just happened because there were plans to unify, like you say, Africa under one uh, currency and to free the African continent uh, from being dependent on the US dollar. That was a big thing uh, 
for Gaddafi, but quickly, um, Libya before 2011, when young people got married, they were given from the state. This was a socialist state, mind you, with a middle income, a middle income country, according to the UN. The living standard was higher than countries such as New Zealand and Southern Europe. Um, it was the richest country in Africa. Uh, with the wealth given to the people, 50,000 US dollars was given in a state grant for each uh, new family when they got married. They were given that by the state. There was free education free education for women too, because Gaddafi was particularly particular in, in giving education for the women and saying the women should go and get educated also abroad. When Libyans went abroad, the Libyan state paid their stay in London for them to have that education if the education was not available in Libya. There was free healthcare system in Libya, free for everybody. Tripoli was a beautiful, assert was a beautiful city where everybody went in the summertime to have a good time. It, it was a flawless place, really. I'm thinking about the buildings, everything was painted and lovely done. Even Saif al-Islam al-Gaddafi was responsible of a lot of building projects because of course we know a number of the Libyans you know that didn't have enough money to move into nice housing he built a lot of housing projects and took people from the desert and other places and gave them an apartment this was also given as a grant from the Libyan state we know that Libya under Gaddafi went from having 10 percent literacy rate to 94 percent literacy rate the Average living span was 78 years old. And the water system? And the water system, which was a marvel in, its, in itself that the Libyan water to, and 70% of the Libyan people were connected to that water system. Big, enormous dams to develop uh, yes. Libya because we know there's a lot of desert there. Exactly. All what you say, it's, that's the really truth you know about it. But that's the side what the West don't want the people know about it. And they make from him this, uh, you know, uh, dictator for to convince people that this war have to be done when it was the opposite. Muammar Gaddafi, I can confirm you, he was, since I was a little girl, since I was a little girl, I heard this guy speaking about democracy, equality, between the African and the West country and the sovereignty and the respect. That's all what he was demanding, equality for all. Like he said, we are all human beings. We, we are all human beings and we are all equal. Madame Linda, I thank you very much for taking the time to joining us here at the Herland Report and explaining about your life in Libya as an Algerian back at the time of um, under Muammar Gaddafi. And thank you for uh, being a human rights activist for the dire situation of the Libyans today. Thank you. Thank you to be the voice of Africa. <laughs>